Hey, Tammy, how you doing today? Hey, Brian, I'm doing great. Oh, I'm just so glad to hear that. The holidays are coming. The sun is out. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's good December stuff. December 1st. Can you believe that? Oh, my gosh. I just was like, summer's over, and I'm like, what happened to wow. September, October, and November? I, I had a client call me today, ask me a question about something, and I said, I don't think we can do that because there's a time frame. Yeah. Know? And it's, I said, five years, and he goes... Can you look into it? It was six years ago <laughs> six that we did this thing, and now we can we can make the change that he wants oh to make. Oh my I was like, gosh! Wow. I don't know. Yeah, I felt like it was two years ago we did this. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, and again, here we are with another episode of accounting and accountability. Here we are. Yes. Tammy. I'm Brian. Oh, no. Brian. I'll go well, first. Okay, I'm Brian you go Satina, first. Director of Tax Services. Tammy Ordway, Director of Entrepreneurial Services, and mm. as always. We, we have we a have information. Ton of information. We have information. Never gets old. Yeah. So I know everybody's been hearing a lot about the infrastructure bill. Yes. Right? So we talked yes. about that previously, and there was very little tax stuff in there, but we we've touched on those things. Now there's this Build Back Better bill, mm -hmm. okay, and that's the one that has passed um, the House, but it's in the Senate, and the Senate is is not real yeah. pleased with it. So we'll see where that ends up. But right. a couple things to note. I get questions on this a lot. The uh, There's federal tax credits for electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And some of those have expired depending on the vehicle sure. make. Yep. And they were from 2500 to 7500 The maximum credit that the B BBB. BBB. Yeah, let's just call it the, the BBB. BBB. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, is is 12500 for Woo! a new electric vehicle bought between 2022 and 2031. Woo! So what I don't know is, is that going to be some of the mm -hmm. vehicles that were there before, mm -hmm. right. which are, they, if they made so many, then no more could be made. Exactly. I think I'm, I'm thinking they're just going to say electric vehicles across yeah. the board. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that is. That's huge because the price uh, variance is big on that. Yeah, so 12.5, sure that's is. starting to get a little And there's substantial. a lot more cars now. There's there's mm -hmm. a, a Ford F-150 now that is, is electric. No way. It's crazy. Yeah. Then it can power your house. That's exciting. Yeah. So there's oh, a, so it can act like as a generator. Yeah. If your house goes out. Yep. Oh. Yep. Um, just okay. so you know, the credit would phase out with modified adjusted sure. gross income sure. over five hundred grand. Like everything uh, married does. filing joint. So, FYI. Yeah. So I want to talk about another bill that was introduced uh, in the House in October, and it would make Social Security benefits possibly tax free for some more uh, taxpayers. So the way it okay. is right now, if you're married filing joint. You pay tax on some level of your Social Security if you make over thirty-two thousand married filing joint, right. twenty-five thousand single. Right. Well, this would raise it to fifty thousand married filing joint, thirty-five thousand single. Yeah. So that does expand it. But here's the part of this I don't like. Right, uh, right now, you're only subject to Social Security at six point two percent on roughly like up to about. 142,008 of wages yeah, this yeah, year, 147,000 dollars of wages next year. Well, now the proposal is talking about wages up to 400,000. Whoa. Talk about That's a, huge, a tax increase. That's a big tax yes. increase. Yes. Now, I realize Social Security's in trouble and we've been told this I think since you and I mm -hmm. were babies that yeah. Social Security's in trouble. I expected to see maybe like Increase in age eligibility yeah. or maybe right. taxing, not, you know, this 50 taxing yeah. more of your Social Security dollars. But I am a little surprised at proposing that Social Security up to 400. That That is a huge tax increase. Wow. Yeah. That, that is that is. So large. we're, we're going to watch that one very closely because that affects a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and again, this is workers with wages. So we think it's like your personal wage is not a married filing joint, yeah. you know, but still like if you made 200,000, you're going to now pay social security on about 53,000 more 6.2. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. So more That's to come on that. To yes, it is a big deal. And we'll, we'll keep watching that <clears throat> yeah. too. Because even, you know, you think about it, they talk about up to 400,000. Yeah. That's a lot of money for a lot of people, but, it it, but it's, it's not for some. I no. mean, you, you have families of four or five who might make, you know, Two fifty, three hundred thousand, and now you're right. adding six point two percent on exactly. almost half of that increase. An immediate increase, and I mean, not that's... to mention, I mean, some of the things originally in these um, bills that we're tracking were going to hit already yeah. that range, right. and so now <clears throat> you know you throw another six point two on there. That's ins ooh. it. Starts adding up. Yeah. Yep. Well, let's keep going. Okay. I got something uh, that's been popping lately from the IRS. They've been sending out these notices. 
<laughs> and basically, it says that your employer identification number is no longer valid because something changed. <laughs> they don't tell you what changed. Right. So then what you've got to do is you've got to file this form 8822, which you've got to list out the address the responsible person, maybe whoever mm -hmm. signs the return. So what would happen is, is let's say on your corporate return, you're using one address, and maybe on your Forms 941, you're using another address for some reason sure. or another. And now they, they're not they're seeing that at the IRS, and they're kicking these notices out and saying your EIN is invalid. Oh invalid. My gosh. So now you got to file this form. And then we already know, right, Tammy? That yeah. Everything's backed up. Right. So how? So these, these forms are going to sit there. Yeah. Unopened, and then what's going to happen though is right. you know something going to happen. Is something going to happen at the IRS where now I file my return and, and they're going to say I don't know this EIN? Know, right. I mean it's it's. And you know that can happen because you could have started up a business that maybe you gave your home address, mm -hmm. but then you give us your business address mm -hmm. or you give us your PO box. Right. It's common sometimes right. to have you know maybe some different addresses out there. Right. And That's some platforms don't allow a PO box, so yeah. maybe you're using that on your company filing but you use the physical address on your 941 right it's just with all the stuff going on right now i find this to be yeah, just that's egregious bad timing yeah bad yeah. timing well something else i'd like to bring up like kind of exchanges is always a strategy that we have brought before our clients for decades and a like kind of exchange basically says that i buy um a commercial property mm -hmm. and i want to sell it and i have a gain for 100 grand mm -hmm. but i have identified a new commercial property mm -hmm. i could take that gain mm -hmm. and i could basically put it into that new property now of yeah. course it reduces the basis but i kind of kick yeah. the can down yeah. the road kick right the can down the road. i don't, don't pay, pay the tax, tax today. today that's right well as we know that was eliminated on non-real estate right property. you used to be able to do it with equipment and yes you know business, Planes, other business assets whatever yeah. you do yeah. business assets well now it looks like there's some talk on um could congress could again i say propose sure, sure. you know i don't want to get anybody um upset here could congress limit the gain deferral from you know like kind on real estate yeah. that has been talked about now from our experts and what we read, it seems like right now it's unlikely. Um, but President Biden wanted to cap the mm -hmm. amount of deferred gain each year at $500,000. Yeah. And in a case of married filing joint couples, um, $1 right, million. Right. So that didn't make it even into the House passed. BBB. Yeah. And didn't I, even I, make I, it in I, there. I think there's such a huge real estate lobby. Yes. That that's going to be a tough one for them yeah. to pass. So just in case there's any, because I have been asked from some clients, is that still available? Is mm -hmm. it going to go anywhere? Let's just say for now, it's unlikely at least in the next year. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a lot going on and, and, and that we we got to keep our beat on, right? We you know? do. So we just do. a couple, one little tidbit for folks, because I get this question as well quite a bit. People who are enrolled in Medicare cannot contribute to an HSA, right. which is a health savings account. Uh, I get that question a lot. I, I just went on Medicare, but I have an HSA. Sure, can I, but yeah. you can use once you once you turn sixty five, you can use HSA money to pay for your monthly premiums, yes. Medicare premiums, which is kind of nice because you've accumulated this money potentially for many many years yeah. in your HSA tax free, right? And you can use it for medical expenses and such. Nice, you know. So that's a good deal. That is good. Um, so I'm I'm happy. I, I'm happy to report that because I get that question a lot. Right, and. Um, Let's just let's just keep talking about the uh, IRS and their um, ability to process returns. So just something uh, as of November 13th, so this is pretty current, the uh, IRS have reported a backlog of 2.7 million unprocessed 1040Xs, which are amended. Mm. And now they're stating that the wait time, which previously was reported to be about 16 weeks, which... Back in the day, you could get an amended process in four to six. Mm -hmm. Then they reported 16. Now it's longer than 20 weeks. Wow. 20 weeks. So folks out there, if we amend your return because yeah. something came out that we didn't know about and you're getting a refund, you're going to wait. It could be a half of a year you, nearly, you know, it, before you might get any movement it, it, it's, on it. It's insane. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and that makes, that goes back to what I was saying earlier is that how are they can't process what they have? Yeah. And then with this whole employee retention credit and right. having to amend returns for that, how how are they going to do this how? work? I, I just, and we still have we still have a bunch of clients we filed nine forty one X's for. Yeah. And I don't know if the thirteen weeks we were told is realistic. Right. For that. Yeah, and I and you know, kind of this is a good segue mm -hmm. to what you're talking mm -hmm. about is the IRS and getting in touch with them. 
<laughs> yeah. Right? I've been hung up on yeah. Monday morning three times. Yeah. Just hung up on. Courtesy well, hang up. Yeah, I mean, it. in years past, Tammy and I would just, a client would get a notice from the IRS, and I got to tell you, nine times out of ten, they're wrong. Yeah. And we would do a correspondence letter and mail it in with the IRS. Right. Well, it was because of the pandemic and such, those aren't getting processed. No. And clients are getting intent to levy yes. notices and things. And so now we're like, we're just going to call. Call. And you can't get through. Yeah. And so what are we supposed to do? As CPAs, we have an IRS practitioner priority yeah. line. Oh. And we're getting hung up on that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. That happened to me. And, and then Tammy <laughs> got hung up on the taxpayer advocate, advocate, which is for the taxpayer. Exactly. So it's like very hard to get on Ooh. the phone with them. Yeah. And so please have patient. some patience we're with trying. us because we're trying. We're unfortunately the middleman. Yeah. And as much as, as everybody thinks we have a direct hotline to the IRS, yeah. we do not. And the IRS <laughs> departments don't talk to each other. No. So if you have an issue with one part, part department and it goes to collections, it, collections just oh, kicks out notices. Whole no, and, automatic and, notices. And, and, yeah. and then they get these intent to levies and they're scary notices. Oh, they are scary. You know, they are so scary. It, it, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't like to have one of those. Yeah. But, but I have one final thing. If okay. I can, if, you, if I can. Please, please. So fantasy sports. <laughs> So everybody plays fantasy football. Well, I did days. once, well, and then I wasn't invited yeah, the next year. Apparently, yeah, yeah. she she did too. She did too well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, fantasy sport winnings have to be reported as gambling income. Oh my! So gosh. everybody has these leagues, and everybody kicks in money, and at the end of the end of the thing, you get whatever that is, thousand right. bucks, whatever. Right. You're supposed to report it as gambling income and losses, but losses are deductible on Schedule A. Right. So if you have gambling if, income, and the here here's what's going to get you guys. Not everybody itemizes. That's so right. you could be in a situation where you're paying tax on gambling income yeah. and you don't get the loss because your standard deduction is higher That's than right. you itemize. That's so right. guess what that is? Yep. A little tax increase built yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested in how the IRS polices that, but that's what uh, you're that'll be, to do. Yeah, that'll be interesting. But wow. Wow, that's a lot today. Yeah, that's fun though. We yeah, had a lot of indeed, good information. Indeed. Now we're